Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Aaron Danton here, Shield and Buckler Garage. Um, so, uh, I got something in the mail um, for the wife's car. She ordered it. She's the one who works, so she got. She's getting a stereo put in her car. It's one that we had. Um, I had taken it out of a, our Jeep. Uh, we had to let it go back to return it basically to the dealer that we bought it from um, because like one month after we got it um, not even a month it was like a week um, the CVT transmission started going out in it um, it, it just uh, was overheating and then whining and then um, the timing chain started rattling in it we haven't had any luck with cars um, let's see oh the catalytic converter was stopped up and it was throwing codes like crazy so uh, we took it back to the dealer and uh, alleviated ourselves of that payment and uh, she went back to her old car the Toyota Matrix as I'm working on the Infiniti but I'm gonna put this uh, tuned in stereo into her uh, Matrix and we got the install kit and so I gotta undo what I had done for the Jeep um, the install kit comes with it says it's complete and it says that it has a for 2002 to 04 matrix I don't know if you'll be able to see it but it's in the packaging still right there's it Toyota it's backwards of course as I'm looking at myself so I know what's in, in the frame um, I'm in just our uh, it's a converted garage and um, so I'm just in here at the table, the little hobby area that we had set up, and uh, working on this thing. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to take this thing apart, and uh, I'm going to try to edit this video back together uh, with the continuation. Basically, uh, I have a heat shrink tubing on there. I soldered this up, I put it together. This goes to the stereo, um, and this go went to the Jeep, and I'll be showing you... Um, how to solder um, and then the, the adapter kit hopefully it works we'll see uh, for the matrix uh, hole that that uh, this used to sit in one night I came out or one morning that came out and actually the, the, somebody had already uninstalled and was trying to steal the stereo probably figured out it didn't work because the CD player doesn't work in it and uh, all the buttons are wore out um, so <laughs> I don't even know why they were trying to steal it. it. had the dash torn apart. So they did most of the work of in, uninstalling this thing for me. And so, uh, but that's it. Uh, you can see the difference uh, in size right there. So there's an adapter kit that we got. And it comes with the wiring. Um, so we'll be putting that together. All right, you guys. I'll be getting back with you when I start soldering. Right now, I'm just cutting off the old shrink wrap, and then I'm gonna basically, well, I'll just show you one, hopefully it works, and it comes apart. Heat it up with the soldering iron. Get them to split apart, that way I don't have to tin both sides. I'm thinking it may save some time, but we will see. Once it gets heated up, hopefully it comes apart. May end up having to tin the soldering iron to get it to, to break apart. It was tinned at one point. I guess some of it. But uh, it's a process, that's for sure. Sorry, I wasn't in frame there. Uh, I'll be tilting this down when I'm doing tilting this whole setup down. Yep, there it goes. It's starting to heat up. I can feel it. Should just come apart. There we go. So that's the part that goes to the stereo. The other end is the part that, it looked, that it went to the Jeep that we took back. And so I'll be getting back with you once I get all these separated. And I'll show you tinning uh, the new harness because this came with a wiring harness um, and everything I need to put it in the Toyota Matrix. So I'll be back. I'm going to try to edit these together. It'll be the first time I've ever edited two videos together. We'll see how it goes, you guys. All right, I'm back. <clears throat> so got all that desoldered or <clears throat> taken apart. Um, so this is a stereo harness. It goes to the back of that. It's just a cheap dual from Walmart special but it's touchscreen and convenient 
uh, Bluetooth, you know, speaker, the whole thing. So um, each one of the wires that are for it are labeled. And uh, so uh, this is the ignition switch wire, which a lot of guys, you know, they'll really be steadfast at getting it to the right to the back of the ignition. But all you need to do is find a switched power source. Uh, it's literally just a signal uh, wire. Uh, this is the actual power wire that runs to the battery. So, um, and usually the harness that comes with it um, goes, plugs into it. Um, we'll get the power wire that used to power the old stereo right to it. So let's see what's in the package here that this install kit came, comes with. It's from eBay. It's $14.99. Uh, you, always, you always wonder if you're blowing... $14 on something you can't use when you buy from eBay because you just never know. Oh, look at that. Of course, I'm soldering, but uh, they give you, it says complete, so it came with butt connectors. I've never liked them. I've actually never had success with them. <clears throat> I got Gorilla Grip hands, so when I full test them, they always come apart. Uh, Alright, so that is supposedly, there's the uh, adapter plates side plates which that stereo already has on and this is supposed to fit where the old stereo and adapt it out it says it's for a 92 I, I don't know if that's going to work we show it's got a lot of parts in there we'll see if something adapts to make it work somehow it says this is for a GM 92 to 2012 import select ISO double din it. <coughs> uh, let's see. I may end up having to like round the corners off on it. I mean, it's pretty much the same size, but the corners are a lot rounder on this than that is showing. See how round the corners are on the old stereo? <coughs> this is showing a really square corner. So, I may be breaking out the sand discs on it, right? I'll just file it. <clears throat> I got files. <clears throat> as long as it gets close. <clears throat> if it's not close at all. I mean, it does say that it will fit a 2002 to 04 matrix and that is an 03. So, we shall see. The uh, antenna adapter kit. <clears throat> and the uh, Chevrolet Metro Tracker Prism. Oh, yeah, Chevy. Makes sense. <clears throat> what? I might have just desoldered that for no reason. That almost looks exactly like the plug that came with the Jeep. Uh, nope. They're pinned different. Although very similar. And actually the shape is slightly different too. So that's the one that came for the Jeep. And <clears throat> cool thing about these is they are not very complicated. Um, they are color coded. As you see here, the stereo, aftermarket stereo, comes color coded. Uh, I've, <clears throat> over the years, learned that the white, the, you know, white with a black stripe and solid white, and gray with a black stripe, um, solid black, purple with a uh, black stripe, solid purple, green with a black stripe, and uh, solid green are the speaker wires. <clears throat> and uh, they look like they do correlate on this this feels like a ziploc bag so I'd be kind because if, if it doesn't work I guess I should go check it out make sure it does plug into the matrix and uh, see if it fits before I waste a bunch of time <clears throat> and of course since it was already installed the extension for the ignition constant this is the constant power wire or the switch power wire this is the constant power wire All right so um, yep see co color coordinated purples there I think what is it front speakers purple or are they rears yep fronts I think grays are fronts uh, yep <laughs> so purple front uh, there's the grays that are front and you can see the color coordinate pretty closely So I'm gonna be I'm gonna go check this in the, the Toyota. Uh, I'm not gonna take you with me Because uh, I'll take you in there when I do the final plug-in and then plug into the stereo uh, Switch it on make sure everything's working 
and uh, when I go to go put the, the dash adapter kit in, whatever modifications I gotta do to this thing, says it works. So somehow, some way, these square corners fit in the rounded corners that are in that matrix. We shall see. I'll be back. Okay, so <clears throat> I checked it, uh, it plugs in, and it's pinned the same, so that's cool. And uh, while I was there, I, I tested this out, uh, the ring, and just like I thought, uh, the corners are a little too square. Uh, so, I, I wish I would have taken it with me because I just pulled the dash out of the Toyota Matrix. Uh, and I, I was like, well, let's see how it fits. <laughs> There's just, uh, it doesn't. So, um, they got 80% of it right, which is cool with me. It's literally, I mean, pulling this thing out, yeah, you just literally work your finger in there or you can get your uh, body tool and pop it in there. Pop it free, pull it out, unplug the AC, that's the AC, the hazards, and uh, um, all that stuff. And I'll be using, actually, I forgot, <clears throat> I'll be using the Dremel, round out the corners, make it fit adapt it so it all works having the old stereo is cool because I know the exact positions to have the uh, there's mounting plates they ran away oh there they are here and there and uh, they are indexed correctly so I will make it work uh, I'll just round the corners out figure out how to fit this to the stereo I don't know how that's gonna go yet but I'm sure there's some sort of a way to get this thing attached. Um, I mean, it's almost got the same mounting points as the Jeep one here. Uh, the only thing is, it's that it is more narrow than the Jeep one. So it is what it is. I'll make it work. And uh, I'll take you into the car with me if it's not too dark. I won't be waiting until tomorrow. I'll get it done tonight, no matter what. Uh, probably just take a flashlight with me and... Uh, turn it on along with the dome light let you guys see what I do uh, but it should literally be these will be soldered together I'm gonna show you how to tin that here in a minute and make a solder joint uh, shrink wrap tubing using a lighter I have a heat gun but I, I don't want to go dig it out it's in the shop out back so I'll just use the lighter just got some cheap old uh, lead free rosin core solder Got one that's already open. Be using that to solder them together. Along with this old school. So with this thing, I figured out a long time ago, uh, you need two hands when you're soldering wires together. So uh, I made a <laughs> adapter um, that just holds the switch in, and I just lay it down, solder stuff together. And that's a cord wrap. It's just Velcro. Pretty simple gonna show you this so after doing all that uh, I might I'm gonna get a probably a Facebook store going but I'm gonna uh, it's the uh, mechanics grenade pin pulled it from the end <sighs> like just when you thought you were there <laughs> all right you guys I'll be back in a minute I'm gonna eat some food try to uh, I'm gonna force myself to learn to edit Two videos, three videos, four videos together, and and speed it up through all this stuff. Um, I don't know. We'll see. All right, you guys, will be right back. God bless. You. Okay. <clears throat> so after staring at this thing for a while, and going back and forth on what to do, what I should do, what I shouldn't do, I put one on top of the other. They are exactly the same width. Um, it's just the face plate that's a little bit bigger. Um, and then I looked at the, and I was like, oh, maybe I'll transfer the brackets right to it, right? But um, <clears throat> this and this is integral, and I will have to round the corners on that to make it work. Um, so I decided that I'd get that put together. I read the directions for the Pontiac. It says that uh, 2002 to 08 Pontiac Vibe, 2002 to 04 Toyota Matrix. Um, it says that it should work. Uh, I know it's all backwards, but I can't flip it. Um, 
it says to remove the shaded tabs. So all the dark spots, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get some wire cutters, nip it all off, break it off, whatever can be break. Some of it's scored already, and then it snaps together, goes on here, and I'll have to round the corners off to, to fit, and uh, I'll be doing all that. And then I'll get back with you and show you the results. Hey, okay, so I got the tabs broke off, and you can see how it indexes in right there, and that just uh, clips in, and then uh, it slides over the top of this thing, and you can hear my, hopefully you can't hear the wife out there, and then that's it. But then I went ahead and I, I test fitted it, and when I test fitted it, it, it actually, I don't know. <laughs> So I'm going to leave, I'm not going to round the corners off. I'm going to see if this thing will just mount behind this because there is absolutely no way. Oh, it goes like this. The other way. Absolutely no way that it's going to slide through there. Even if I rounded the corners off because uh, up and down it doesn't fit. Side to side it fits great. You can see the, how it gaps out on either side. But up and down, it is way too big. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering if it's supposed to be mount behind there or not. So I'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and uh, set up to solder. Just thought I'd show you this. Uh, well, it may not fit vertically. Well, they did line up the screw holes pretty well, both sides. So it indexes in. It kind of clips together. I don't know if you'd be able to see it. Yeah, you can see. And it was a bear. It took over an hour just to get them to clip in there. Because uh, this plastic is super cheap. But it stays together once clipped together. <clears throat> and I'll screw it all together. Um, I'll probably just do the install in the morning. But I'll, I'll, I'm going to pause again. And then I'll get set up to solder this. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to tin. I'll probably just do a couple wires real fast. This is the side that goes to the Toyota, uh, so it's brand new. I haven't tinned it yet. I haven't uh, soldered it yet. The uh, the side that goes to the stereo has been, like I showed you earlier, I just desoldered it. Uh, all I did was heat it up. So I will put something that's not plastic. Hang on a second. All right, so I just went and grabbed a piece of picture frame glass from a picture frame picture that fell off the wall there's a wall shake in this house uh, when you shut it door. okay so tinning simple uh, you want to tin that tin the uh, solder iron so it's got lots of solder on it dip the wire in uh, get some because this is flux core so it'll just heat up and then when, once it's hot it'll it'll suck it in and uh, it'll be able to make a connection really simple uh, quick and easy uh, and hang on a second I'll show you that real fast okay first off uh, just a small piece of uh, shrink tube on there so that when I'm done I'll be able to shrink it down onto it and it will uh, oh. The stereo jumped at me. Um, break it before I put it in. I don't know what I was even saying. It scared me. Oh, I need to figure out which wire is which. So, being that they're all color coded because they, you know, uh, from Toyota it's colored different. And that's why just getting a simple adapter plug makes it quick and easy. So, you just go, okay, this is the solid green. So you grab the solid green, which just so happens to be labeled on uh, the stereo side, and it is a rear speaker on the left side. And with the soldering iron tinned already, just put them both on there, keep them touching. Makes a great connection. Slide this guy over. It's still warm, so it should start shrinking actually. Um, and you can use a heat gun. I have one, but I just was lazy today and didn't want to go get it. So, heat up with a lighter. Shrinks down on there. 
It's an insulated connection. Solid. Give it a tug pull test. It's good to go. Okay, I'll do all the rest of these and I'll be back. I'm going to try to edit all this together. If not, it'll be a one, two, three, four, five, six. Way too many videos thing. But uh, it'll be cool. It's pretty easy. Um, it's real simple. And then once you get them all together, you literally go into the car, plug that in, plug in this into the back, well, put the stereo, plug this into the back of the stereo, slide the stereo in, screw it into the factory mounting positions, and hopefully put the cover, plug all the uh, accessories back in on the cover, oh, which I put away in the cabinet over there. And uh, it, it should just pop in. And it'll hopefully cover the, the face up and make it look like a factory install. Okay, uh, I'm going to try to edit this together. And uh, if I, I'll end up probably finishing this video tomorrow but because uh, it's getting pretty late. And I'm going to go watch some YouTube videos. Uh, I might go, uh, I saw Hoonigan has a, a new giveaway car, an R33. And I'm working on an Infiniti G35. And so I have some interest. I want to go check it out. I'm going to probably get a keychain or something like that. And uh, let's see. Do I have my uh, mechanics grenade pin? Let's see. Uh, pull the pin. Blowing it up, baby. All right, you guys. God bless. Hey, I'm back. So, oh, just lost that screw. I decided that I would um, go ahead and mount this thing up since it almost fell apart and get it out of the way. So I can solder up everything. Pull the screws. Yeah, I didn't think that might not work. Pull the screws out of the Toyota uh, stereo. Trying this out. Let's see. We'll be right back. Okay, so I opened up the, the screws for the from the kit. And it looks like they do have screws that'll work. Just not enough of them. So we'll see how this goes. It's the struggle. That went in real snug. Those are carriage bolt. Those won't work for anything. What is going on? I may have to get creative. I'll be back. Alright, so I was only able to get find two screws that would work, but I, I got it. And uh, here you go, check it out. So there's the factory Toyota one. After I broke off all the tabs, snapped it all together, you can see they all, uh, this, this tab lines up pretty well here. This tab lines up pretty well there. So, uh, hang on a second. Okay, check it out. Um, <clears throat> so on the back of this, it tells you what each one of the colors on of wires mean on the, the wiring harness that came from the um, Skosh. Skosh is the company, I believe. And uh, so then <clears throat> I looked, finally looked through the manual that they give you. And it literally told me to do exactly what I did. So, uh, that's what I did. Worked out. <clears throat> we'll see how it works once it's in. I'm going to go ahead and solder this up. Uh, and I'll be back. Just going to go ahead and cut these and slip them on. I don't know if I'm going to be able to edit it together, but I'm going to give it a try. I don't really want a whole bunch of little videos. One thing, you know, showing one thing and then another. But, uh, however it works out is how it works out. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just used the, the editor, the Samsung editor. Hopefully that's enough of them. If not, I got a little bit larger size. Uh, and, uh, I also have... Standard issue electrical tape. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I'll just slide them on all the speaker wires for now. Go the other way. 
slide them all on here for now because <laughs> they don't have the tags and it'll be easier doing speaker wires first greens grays purples try i try to keep them all straight but <clears throat> you know they get crossed sometimes it doesn't matter because it's all behind the dash as long as it's all insulated and protected from shorting out and causing a fire <clears throat> um, but definitely take your time when you're shrinking it make sure everything is covered all bare metal surfaces not showing and let's see power wire that's the constant so your clock keeps its time that's I don't know what that one is I have to look at the schematics that's the antenna wire and there's ground ground wire I just go ground to ground black to black over there and this uh, one of these is the reverse or the parking brake the reverse gear yet yeah, there it is parking brake that's illumination orange wire I don't know why I, <clears throat> why I didn't remember that is it orange with white orange with black over there we have orange with black over here we have orange with white But, um, yeah, there is one, uh, let's see, what is it, ground wire? One wire that you put to ground, and it will, um, make it so that you can, uh, have the DVD player on when it's not in park. It's the park brake, um, switch. It's just a ground interrupt. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and. <clears throat> Set this up for soldering. Slide it all up. Slide this down. Don't want to burn the table in any sort of a way. And the stay on switch that I rigged up. And I'll just tin in and, and solder these together. See where's the greens. Try to keep them straight without getting crossed. Yep, they're, they should go straight across, pretty straight across. It won't be in the end. It'll be a mess. It always is. So, yep, tin this one. Uh, give it a little twist. Tin the soldering iron. Tin the wire. Takes the acid, that the flux, and then just go ahead and stick them together. The flux is what um, causes it to stick to the wire, the solder. So it's an acid, it etches it so it can receive the uh, solder and bond. <coughs> Let's do the gray ones. Let's see, gray with black. Let's do that one. Let's see, gray with black. So yeah, you could sit there all day long and rub it around on the solder with no acid, no flux to uh, etch the metal. It won't stick. So you got to get some flux in there. Reduce a little bit of flux. And it sticks. And then once it's tinned, it's just literally just melting the uh, solder that's on each one of them. And then letting them bond. Hopefully you stay still enough. That they bond. It's the struggle. Do I have steady enough hands to be a doctor? I don't believe so. But you never know. Or a surgeon. Not anybody could be a doctor, but definitely not everybody could be a surgeon.
And once I get these gray wires done, I will probably pause this because no need to keep watching the same thing over and over again, not even in fast forward. Even I get bored, although slightly satisfying, right? Okay, here we go. It's going to stay together this time. Oh, no. No bond. I might need more. A little more on here. Look at both surfaces. So I kept that one by laying it on there, right? It might just be the old. My kid is choking out there. It's getting hot on my fingers. All right, I'll be back. So, I uh, have a wire I need to strip. So I figured I'd show you, uh, show you it, just because uh, these are pretty cool how they work. It's got a gripper and it's got a cutter, right? So you stick it in, uh, lined up with the cutter, how much you want to cut off, and let's see if it does it. Quick and easy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to edit all this together, but I'm going to try, you guys. Uh, but, yep, yeah, so, and then this, uh, this was the, oh, this is the illumination. That was the park brake. Uh, reverse, or the reverse. I don't know what it is exactly, but, uh, yeah, you're supposed to hook it up to the park brake positive, and then it will make... Uh, it's so that you can only <clears throat> uh, watch DVDs when you're in park. <clears throat> so, but, uh, oh, there it is. Actually, that's the one that will, I'm just going to hook it straight up to the, because uh, it's a positive, I believe. Um, oh, no, negative. It's a ground switch. So, I'll just hook it up to a ground somewhere any ground and it should work fine uh, at any time so basically uh, on long trips because I mean out here uh, it's not uncommon to drive an hour just to go do what you want to go do because it's a small city so uh, we let the kids watch movies while we drive it's not like it distracts me uh, or the wife so all right you guys uh, I'll be back hey what's up uh, so I got this all soldered up uh, last night I actually took my electrical tester into the car, um, plugged it all in, tested the, these. Every one of these has positive coming out of them. So uh, you don't want to hook positive to positive because of dead short, fires possibly. So these are all pertinent I um, to working the stereo in its simplest form, no dimmer. There's an actual manual dimmer on that thing, so you can just dim it by tapping the screen. Uh, in the bottom left corner which is pretty simple and easy i took the uh, e-brake um this has has a ground wire the toyotas have a ground wire coming off of it see i told you like you, you can't ever keep them straight that comes from way over there crosses over i could have if i would have realized what was going on fixed it but i didn't um <clears throat> so anyways uh, it's called the park brake it's a negative uh ground type thing oh it got dark because the window behind me uh is not Let's see if I can get some light. Hang on a second. All right, there we go. So uh, yeah, that's the part brake. It's a ground wire hooked it to the positive or negative uh, terminal that comes out of the Toyota Toyota wiring harness, and then I uh, separated out all these wires. Uh, some of them are for the dimmer switch, uh, but with positive coming out of, and of both leads, I'm not going to hook them up. Um, one of them is for the if I hook up an amplifier. That's this one coming out of the Toyota harness. It's this one coming out of the uh, stereo harness. So either way, you could run a, a remote switch to a, an amp um, wherever you have it. And um, so, and then this is just a shoot. 
glaring out the uh i'm gonna have to switch around someday but today uh, it doesn't matter i'm just making this one real quick um uh, hang on a second it'll refocus um it's not working out hang on maybe if i stay si sitting backwards so uh i got all these uh insulated from each other so they don't catch fire double check them this one i missed some of the wire so uh the solder joint um so uh i was gonna wrap these to make it clean and looks like it went dark again <laughs> man uh it's been one of those days today you guys you know uh it's sunday i heard the ch church bells ringing you know the birds are chirping there was three little birds on my doorstep but hopefully you can see what's happening here i'm just uh keeping uh separate uh oops and wrapping sticky side out uh, i'm gonna wrap the harness keep it so it's not like a rat's nest in there doesn't need to be super tight or anything like that and uh, you will find wires that need to be like folded over it's no big deal just uh give them a little s curve pinch them in there um although the flow of electrons is uh <laughs> interrupted because when they have to turn the corner real sharp like that they get, they get interrupted um, so it slows them down um, so if you have a huge draw on that wire it will cause a bit more resistance than a straight wire crazy right most people don't know that so if you uh, put a high high voltage I'm going to back that off a little bit cut it and wrap from further wrap from two ends to the middle oh my goodness two ends to the middle Not a bad idea okay so i want to keep those separate wrap these in and give them a little i want this kind of straight um, i don't know you have to be a certain type to be a mechanic and things that run in crooked paths kind of bother some of us i guess uh oops i guess i wasn't really showing that so i just i'm wrapping it down from the other connector two ends to the middle I'll try to make it oh, tell you what it is one of those days for sure I'm trying to make it somewhat straight oh, keeping the other wires, accessory wires, other, it's a dimmer switch, illumination switch. I just wanted to keep them separate in case I figure out that I need them. And I can just quickly get them and do something with them. Uh, especially if we decide to put an amp in. So, kept those all separate, right? And this is the auxiliary cord, which uh, we just use Bluetooth, so we don't really care. Um, and so I was going to go ahead and just flag all the ends of these. So they, you know, because they have an open end, I cut them off with the wire cutters, you know, flush. So the wire's not sticking out. Hopefully, maybe you can see that. Yep, there it is. Um, so, but still, uh, an arc can happen. It doesn't take much to cause a fire. Just, uh, you know, one little wire heats up, goes red, hits a piece of something that's tinderish, and uh, can cause a fire. So. It's best to insulate them somehow and not leave them just hanging loose, bare, and ready to create fire and havoc in your car. Uh, everybody's, I mean, if you want to see what can happen just from one of these wires touching another wire that's ground that's got positive in it, or two positives touching each other, um, go look on YouTube. I'm sure you can find car fires. But yeah, so uh, I'll take you guys out in the car with me and all of the stuff I need. And we will um, continue on. So, and then I was just going to go with one or two wraps around just to tag them down to the main uh, wire connections so that uh, they're contained. And not just loose in there, vibrating, ready to cause fires. 
But if I ever unplug it, I won't be mad at myself for taping them all down within the harness and call myself a bunch of names. <clears throat> One of those names would be like Moron. Why are you so stupid? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, dude, heard church bells. Hopefully some of you guys are in church. Uh, you know, I, I don't have anything against church, like I've said. I like church. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it's close to factory as I can get it from home. If I had a large piece of shrink tubing, I just would have put it over the whole bundle and shrunk it down but the tape works just as well all right see you guys in the car hey what's up everybody all right so through the magic of editing right hopefully we'll see <laughs> i'm still no edit wizard but uh it's Aaron Danton here uh just in the car uh toyota matrix i uh, remember i pulled this out um so let's go ahead and see what happens we'll plug this in Hoping I don't catch a copyright thing, uh, just because I test it out. Oh, first off, yeah, let's go ahead and just plug this in. Uh, the kit came with an extension for the antenna. Uh, hopefully it works. I didn't look at it too closely. And if things get, like, where I'm bored, I'll just shut it down and show you some finished stuff. Yeah, it looks like it'll extend it proper. Uh-huh. There we go. I probably... I, I didn't add any... No, I don't. Need to, but yeah, that'll plug in there. Well, might as well just go ahead and plug it in. Screw it together. Um, <clears throat> and I'll get it turned on for you guys, hopefully. Hopefully, no fire, no fire. Sorry for the heavy breathing, you guys. Uh, it, it's been like one cold, one uh, thing after another. I'm going to go up with the fire harness. And obviously, like, I mean, it's a great idea, but where, how, unless you already have an extension, right? It's just... Kind of like, why? Why did they do that? I don't know. Why did they have it? I don't know. All right. I'll select some screws from these provided screw bag of random screws. I mean, they got carriage bolts in there. I have no idea what the carriage bolts are about. Must be a Chevy thing. But if you're wondering what a carriage bolt is or why it's called a carriage bolt, it's because uh, it can, it keys in, let's see if I can get it there, on that square part through a piece of metal and will uh, stabilize it so you can tighten it from one side without having to reach a screwdriver or something on the other side. And it's got no slot, no Phillips head. Okay, let's see what I can accomplish. Yeah. I mean the kit works pretty great, pretty, pretty nice, pretty easy, pretty simple. Make sure all these wires will pull out so I can get to them. This I never even real saw this thing. I have no idea what that's about, but every time I pull on it, see it only comes out so far before it comes on the stereo, and that's just plastic. And I don't want to run interference with anything else that's in there, so I'll use a short screw. It's got some back tabs, but it's also got uh, um, line-up tabs back there that hold it uh, from flopping up and down. So I'll rely on that. And put some screws in the, the front of this thing. I'm going to try this short screw on this side. I know I, it's an old, rusty screwdriver. A lot of my tools are old and rusty because uh, having gone into ministry I haven't done any construction and my uh, my work truck was a utility bed that leaked so let's see yep. snug 
Gorilla Grip. Don't want to kill it. Not jiggling around anymore. Let's see, let's see. Decent size. That's a clip, body clip in there. Um, I've got two different sizes in here I could use. Two different gauges of screw, or three it looks like, even I see another one. I may prefer that one over both of these that I have in my hand. Where's that other one? There it is. Oh, that's the same. That's the one I was looking at. No, oh, that's the same as well. I got four of these in here. Oh, <laughs> These came off that other uh, bracket that I'm grabbing out. One of them, I think I'm gonna prefer this one. And it's uh, a little bit heavier, a little bit thicker. Let's see how it does. If it even gets in the hole. That's your home, go home. Uh, nope, not long enough. A little love. I didn't grab a magnet. Back in the bag. I saw a long one in there. There's two long ones. I didn't want to run a long one on this side because that's the heater vent. And I've got four long ones in here. I may run one of the back screws, but I can't really tell kind of a screw it would require other than Phillips. I will always try to start with the short screw first just because uh, I hate having a bunch of screw in there for no good reason just looking to bite something and cause a short or problems even though it's pretty solid already actually. Alright so let's uh Plug all this in at the top first. Now every one of these are different, so it doesn't can't can't get it wrong. That's just the light. That's the defrost switch. And they pretty much just fall right in, into place. So this cable, I don't even know. There's a cable in there. I never saw it. I don't think it was actually connected before. And uh because I never saw it yesterday. And I pulled this out. Hopefully, I can snap it back in somehow. Yeah, see, it just comes right out. Is there a piece missing? I don't think it was connected before. We got it. Hang on a sec, I'll be right back. Okay, uh, hey, so I uh, went and did some YouTube research. It's always handy to have uh, other people. I mean, if you want to know something, just Google it and you'll find out. But uh, Max Worldwide uh, was working on a Toyota Matrix, uh, ended up taking everything apart. Uh, I think he was probably doing the same thing, putting in a stereo. I figured out this cable is actually the um, so it's got this research recirculation button recirculation button right here right so uh, when you have it depressed and you switch this over to defrost it kicks this off um, which it mine never has worked and he explained it why because this is what happens this uh, this part right here I don't know if you can see it yeah there it is uh, pushes into this part right here let's see if I can show you push it right into there and it should go click let's see here it click so all it does is manually kick that button out I'll see if you can see it and mine has never worked and that explains it there it is just a manual uh, 
recirculation release button cable. So, uh, and mine's never worked, and that's why I never saw it till today. And so, I figured uh, I should turn this thing on, make sure it's all going to work. Uh, of course, the, I moved the wiper out of the way. I kicked out the movie I had in there, trying to keep from getting a copyright. Screen turns on. Got static noise. Check the, see if I can switch the Bluetooth and everything else. It's all plugged in. So it should be able to pick up signal, but still trying not to get a copyright uh, violation. <coughs> Let's see, go back to radio. There's the dimmer, manual dimmer that works just fine. Just tap it so it didn't need to, you know, doesn't need to be connected to the car dimmer switch because it has its own dimmer options when you don't connect the dimmer. So that's that works. And I'll plug all this in. I don't need the cable plugged in, obviously, because uh, if I'm not smart enough to switch it from recirculation when I turn on the defrost, or my wife isn't, <clears throat> which, I mean, <laughs> I guess as human beings, we need a training. So, <laughs> like, why does my windows keep fogging up? Uh, well, have you been turning off the recirculation button? Oh, no, I sure haven't. All right. <clears throat> so, don't need that recirc button. Doesn't bother me to not have it. Uh, this needs to be lined up tilted in let's see if it works i'm hoping clips in there it is quick easy simple install it worked out just how i thought i wish i would have spaced it over to the left a little which i still can see how easy that comes out it's no big deal really let's see if i can just slide it over to the left screwdriver Loosen screws. Slide it left just a hair. And hold, it looks like. I'm always afraid to strip screws out, especially when they go into clips and plastic or other grip problems. All right. There we go. Gap, gap looks good. So it does cover just like I thought. I figured that they had set it back a little ways so that it just looked like it was factory. Looks good, simple, easy. Stereo install, wife's car. She got me some donuts. The arch nemesis of the construction guy and police officers around the world. May God bless you guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe, the like button. Uh, if you like the content, I'll just be doing random projects whenever they come up. Uh, and then hit that notification so that if I do make a video and, uh, you know, I, I seem to explain things so they're easy for you, then uh, great. And I'll be doing more stuff. If you don't have one of these yet, when you're doing these stereo installs, multimeter, uh, they work great. You basically just find a negative, test whatever wires you want. Can't cause any problems when you're on the negative and you touch the negative. No fire happens, no shorts happen. So um, that's how I tested to see uh, that all those wires had power coming out of them. So I didn't want to connect power to power because that could cause some problems and fire. Uh, so thanks for watching, you guys. Till the next one. God bless. Right, you guys. Uh, I forgot. I'm probably going to be making some of these. Uh, so last night, I walked up to my wife and I said, "Hey, pull this," and she was like, "No." I was like, "Just pull it." And so she pulled it, and I said, "It's it's the uh, mechanic self-destruct pin, you know." And she pulled it and went, "Locking everything about." Load it up, you guys. People are dying. I'm going to be putting these out. 
I got to get a Facebook store going for my stickers, t-shirts, and my mechanic self-destruction. people need good news. Blowing it up. <laughs> They're just like us sinners in need.